Welcome back. Let's look at some examples. All right, we're going to consider um, problem 26 from page 131 of your textbook. Um, some IQ tests are standardized to a normal model with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 16. Draw the model for these scores. Clearly label it, showing the 68.95.99.7 rule, uh, showing what the 68.95.99.7 rule predicts about the scores. First, let's determine where the boundaries for 1, 2, and 3 standard deviations from the mean will be. And then we'll draw. The middle 68% will be between 1 minus 16 and 1 plus 16. So in the, the interval, 84, 116. The middle 95% will be between 100 minus 2 times the standard deviation, so 100 minus 2 times 16, and 100 plus 2 times 16. So 2 times 16 is 32. 100 minus 32 is 68. 100 plus 32 is 132. So that captures 95% of all scores. The middle 99.7% will be between 100 minus 3 times 16, that's 48, and 100 plus 3 times 16, so in the interval 52, 148. So here is a picture. You draw your little normal model there, okay? You've got your horizontal axis, and notice that the curve doesn't ever cross the horizontal axis. It gets asymptotically close to the horizontal axis in the extremes. You will get better and better at drawing these. Um, notice it's single peaked and um, symmetric. In the center, you want to put the mean value, so 100. Um, you do want to make sure you label the horizontal axis there. So we do have IQ scores. And then you want to scale it, showing the all our critical values there. So if you'll look, um, I always start in the middle and move out. I go out one standard deviation. I go to 84 in the left direction. And to the right, I go up to 116. And then I mark off that that's the middle 68%. Then I go out one more standard deviation. I go to 68, I go to 132, and then I indicate that that's the middle 95% of observations. And then I go out to the third standard deviation on either side and mark off my 52 and 148, and I indicate that that is 99.7% of the observations. B, in what interval would you expect to find the um, central 95% of IQ scores? Well, we already figured that out. And so it would be between in, or on the interval of 68 to 132. About what percent of people should have IQ scores above 116? Okay, 84 to 116 contains the, that central 68% of the scores, which leaves 32% of scores to be in the symmetric tails. They have an identical percentage in each tail. So we can divide what's left over by 2. So thus, there are 32% divided by 2, so 16% of scores in each tail. So about 16% of people should have IQ scores above 116. About what percent of people should have IQ scores between 68 and 84? Okay, so that's this little um, area over here. It's not quite the whole tail below 84, but it is um, part of the tail below 84. Using the reasoning from the prior problem, there should be 16% of the scores lower than 84. Because remember, we figured out that, you know, 68% are between 84 and 116, um, and then 16% are higher than 116, which leaves us 16% to be lower than 84. Okay, but that's too much because that includes the whole tail. So we need to figure out what percent is in that tail to the left of 68, and subtract that off. Um, there should be 2.5% of scores lower than 68. How did we figure that out? Well, 68 to 132 captures 95% of all observations, which leaves 5% to be in the two symmetric tails. So 5% divided by 2 is 2.5%. So 2.5% of, of all scores would be below 68 and 2.5% would be um, of the scores would be above 132, but we don't really care about that. 
What we do care about is that 2.5% are lower than 68. So there should be 16% minus 2.5% or 13.5% of scores between 68 and 84. About what percent of people should have IQ scores above 132? 100% minus 95% is 5%, divided by 2 is 2.5%. So about 2.5% of people should have IQ scores above 132. Uh, Problem 28 asks us, what IQ would you consider to be unusually high? And they want us to explain. Well, what I would do is I'd figure out or look back at my model and see what is, since it says high and it's unusually high, what IQ score marks off being two standard deviations above the mean. Remember we said earlier that any value, at least two standard deviations above the mean or more than two standard deviations above the mean is considered unusual. So 100 plus 2 times 16, because 16 is our standard deviation and 100 is our mean, is 132. I would consider an IQ over 132 to be unusually high because an, any observation more than two standard deviations above the mean in a normally distributed model, that's very important that you're dealing with something that's normally distributed and we are told that we are, is considered to be rare. Anything more than uh, three standard deviations above the mean is considered to be an outlier. But they didn't ask us that, just unusually high. So anything, uh, any IQ score over 132 is considered to be unusually high. Okay, well that's as far as we need to go into Chapter 6 for you to be ready for um, your next set of rounds. And then after that, we will finish up Chapter 6. This is a very important chapter. We're going to be using Z-scores throughout the year, well into second semester. We'll leave them for a while, but they will come back. And so this is a critical uh, chapter for you to learn and to learn well. Alrighty, I'll see you all in class. Have a good day.